Yeah, so I mean, this is our re-engineering centre here in uh, Myra and Nuneaton. Um, we've got uh, 130 kind of heads here at the moment, so uh, working on developing our kind of P7 platform. So what you're going to see today is um, some of the elements of that platform. Uh, you'll see our corners. You'll see how we're assembling those corners. You'll see how we're assembling our engineering fleet, um, how we're putting those vehicles together. And then we'll get you out, out in one of, one of those vehicles and you can get to, to see how it, it uh, behaves, how it manoeuvres. And um, yeah, we'll show off, show off what we've got. So this is, this is one of our P7 corners, um, which we're currently um, building at, um, here in, in uh, Nuneaton at Myra. Um, it's a, a, a self-contained corner that contains all the drive, steering and braking, all, all within, uh, within the corner unit itself. So what you can see here is the inboard part of the corner um, with, a, with a central EDU. Um, this is a 100 kilowatts uh, peak EDU with, um, with motor, transmission and inverter all contained in one. That's yep. the unit we've developed together with uh, American Axle. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a, a steering actuator here, which is a 48 volt steering actuator, which uh, gives each ind ind independent corner uh, a 30 degrees of steering. And underneath that, we've got uh, a Brembo kind of braking actuator, which gives us our kind of braking controls. Are you all right, me sort of poking the camera around uh, all of this? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. And, and, and controlling all of that is our, is our own proprietary kind of ECU here that's, uh, that's managing that. That's the corner ECU. We'll talk later. We've also got a central ECU that then does all of the brains of the work. But this is uh, um, what's, what's controlling the corner. And that's what we call the inboard part of the corner. Um, that will stay standard within our piece separate platform. Right. If we go the other side of the corner, you can see a pretty conventional um, double wishbone uh, suspension here with twin spring dampers um, that's been put together for the for the first application which is a seven uh, a seven and a quarter ton uh, truck application um, again Brembo uh, foundation brakes and kind of park brakes so each independent corner has got its own park brake um, we've got things like ride height uh, sensing and um, yeah pretty pretty standard uh, kind of industry standard externals here this bit we can tune um, obviously for different applications, different GVWs, and um, we're at the stage at the moment, this is our B sample, so we've put this together, we'll, we'll, we'll move on in a bit and I'll show you the trucks. And yeah, stuff. sure. Um, we're also now at the next stage in October of taking this to the next level at our C sample, so taking it up a level of, our, of development. Down the side here you can see, this is, this is actually the, the corner zone, and, yep. and you can see if we come down here, the corner bolts directly onto the chassis as a contained unit we can actually take that corner on and off within one hour so the whole wow. corner itself can be serviced or is an independent single part item yes um, and that corner is actually developed for 350,000 kilometers so it's a, a robust durable it's you know yep. yeah built for purpose built, built for, for purpose, purpose. We put, uh, on this corner is uh, is full of sensors um, because we're going to be running this vehicle over the next three four months uh, here at Myra to, um, to collect the road load data, to understand how this corner is being stressed, all the strains, etc., on it. Um, we can then take that data and take it back to our CAE, make sure we've got, uh, we've optimized. And um, we'll also be doing a lot of durability testing with this vehicle to, to kind of, so we can assure that yes. uh, 250,000 kilometers. Got it, got it. And you can, see, you can see a bit of the internals here. So we've got the battery pack that's in the middle here at the moment. So, mm -hmm. um, in this instance, that's a 104 kilowatt hour battery. LFP chemistry? Yes. Yeah. And um, that's in the center. And down the sides at the moment, we've got, uh, we've got some of the high voltage. So, we've got the DC to DCs. Um, we've got a number of additional DC to DCs on these uh, engineering vehicles. So the architecture will reduce those numbers as we go into the next phase. Right. We'll also be moving this high voltage architecture into the center zone away from these side pods so that, again, we're going to give some crash protection for side, uh, side impact. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so we've got three, what's, I can see the guys are busy on the yes. other one, don't interrupt yeah. their work, but um, what are they, uh, so, what's so this one about? 
So this vehicle um, is actually going to be used for a lot of software development. Mm -hmm. So if you think, as I've said earlier, we've got, um, we've got the independent corners, which have their own, which are then connected to our recenter, you can like the brains in our system. Right. That recenter is controlling each of those four corners, uh, arbitrating between them so that we've got, um, obviously we've got four wheel steer, and we've got four wheel drive, we can bring torque vectoring into that as well, and also in four wheel braking, so we can look at that. So that recenter needs to be developed. This yeah. is one of the vehicles that will be used to develop that software, um, do a lot of the validation, also do the fault injection on those, on those systems. Can I ask you, um, hopefully not an awkward question, but you've mentioned some sophisticated technology there and some capabilities like torque vectoring, etc. but surely the commercial vehicle arena, predominantly one, how can I put it, plain, plain vanilla. They just want to know something that's going to do the job utterly reliably and be able to, you know, just, just have that 99 point something yeah. uptime, so... Well, I think yes and no. So I think yes, they do want that, and that's your baseline. That's where you start. Sure. So you, you give a, a reliable product that will be there every day, that will operate every day. But if we think of the way the world is changing and the way that um, you know, there's a demand on uh, the market for drivers, you know, we, can't, we can't get as many kind of, uh, truck and heavy goods vehicle drivers as possible. You want this vehicle to be both safe and fun to drive. Yeah. And what, what you'll see, and hopefully when we get you in the, the truck a bit later, is we've got a very, very agile vehicle here. You know, we've got torque vectoring, we've got four-wheel steer. You drive this like a car. Right. It, it, it performs like a passenger car. Wow. So actually, yes, it's going to be reliable. Yes, it's going to be there every day for you. But also, it's going to be easy to drive, and it's going to be fun mm. to drive. And hopefully, mm. that'll encourage people to want to get in it and uh, work in it every day. So um, my name's Troy Kenyon. I'm responsible for concepts, package and integration within ReUK. So there are two strings to our bow essentially. We look at the concepts that have been generated from Israel. We look to progress them to something that is uh, production ready and manufacturable. And our second string to our bow is integrating the corners into customers' platforms. So this is where we think they'll have a chassis available, but because this is a new sort of technology, they don't really know how to integrate it. So another part of our role is to talk them through that integration process and to fit the corners to any vehicle that they'd like to. Right, so what's Paul looking at then? So Paul is looking at a layout for uh, one of the platforms we're investigating, so he's looking at the thermal system currently. Um, one of the things that Re is very keen to promote is a flat platform, so we're obviously mm -hmm. looking to keep the top of it as flat as possible, and that's one of the challenges that Paul's trying to address at the moment. We've got a lot of kit in there, a lot of components, trying to do a lot of things for us, um, so we're all trying to keep it as low as possible. So you can see he's trying to position all the components so we can link everything together and mount it all, yet still keep it with under a, a, a certain height profile. So that's what he's looking at at the moment. It's quite, cool. it's quite a challenge actually on this vehicle because there are a lot of components in there. Indeed. Well, challenge is what engineers love, isn't it? It that's is. What I, that's what, that, that's what we come in for. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I am, yeah, a few months in. Right, so, so what, what drew you to, to, to Re then? What, what, why have you I think to come in? it was the nature of the, the product. I think it's a really exciting time, just EV mobility in itself. Um, obviously, being part of Formula E gives you a really good introduction into the technology and the gains that we're getting all the time when it comes to, to new new vehicles and battery life and extending that range for consumers. What has always not been clear to me is how that actually extends into B2B, that commercial sense. You know, it's, it's great, you know, Formula E is a fantastic platform if you've got a road vehicle and you're just a consumer in your vehicle and your car and charging at home and things. But actually, what does the future look like for delivery companies for shipping and getting things moving around the world and for me when I started looking into Re, that's really where the excitement started to come in because actually there are so many different questions to be answered on that subject. Re came along and the fantastic you know the platform the corner technology you know being somewhere in Formula E where they do break by wire and then discovering the next step of, of this by wire technology for me was just a no-brainer really you know and I wanted to be at the forefront of, of that journey yeah so we're in the um, the, the p7 uh, development vehicle um, what we're about to do is head round on the steering pad here show off a little bit the um, 
the agility that the corners give us um, in the same footprint of a, of a typical truck um, and it's all around trying to I mean, what what re is about is volumetric efficiency combined with agility. Right. So um, we'll do a bit of that, and I think what we'll also see, um, it'll be hard to, to get on the video, but um, hopefully you'll experience it, is that it doesn't drive like a typical truck. It the 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 EV architecture and the, the low platform changes the physics quite significantly. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, take it away, Wayne. Great. Okay. We have the next sort of iteration of electric power steering. We have pure steer by wire here. So, um, in the, in, for a lot of the challenges that electric power steering has brought over the years, this actually removes some of them and gives other, other opportunities. So imagine now you can put the steering wheel anywhere you want. Yeah. Um, no mechanical links and pretty much, yeah, the flexibility and the giving package and usability is, is the world's your oyster now. Yes.